Welcome back to Beyond Campus, a podcast that delves into various topics pertaining to Israel, Zionism, and having a positive connection to Israel on campus and beyond. I'm your host, Destiny Albritton, with the Israel on Campus Coalition. This episode's special guest is Yuval David. Yuval is an Emmy award-winning actor, television host, and filmmaker. In addition to his impressive career in the entertainment industry, Yuval boldly fights against anti-Semitism as the director of mobilization for the End Jew Hatred Movement. Thanks for joining us today. Enjoy the show. Yuval David, it's so wonderful to meet you. How are you today? I'm very good, especially now that I'm speaking with you, Destiny. <laughs> Wonderful. It's great to meet you. Um, I know that you are the director of mobilization for the End Jew Hatred Movement. Can you tell me a bit about, can you just introduce like that that organization and, and what you do there? Yeah, the End Jew Hatred Movement is actually the first civil rights and social justice movement for the Jewish people. In this era, <clears throat> excuse me, in this era of civil rights and social justice movements, we're in an exciting time where we're focusing on people's needs, on community needs, and how to truly represent and advocate for communities that have a specific identity. In this mix, we need to add the Jewish people in the fight against Jew hatred. And the reason we call it Jew hatred as opposed to anti-Semitism is we're using the vernacular, the vernacular of saying that people who are haters are anti-Jewish, or Jew haters. And the End Jew Hatred Movement is not just a movement in the United States, but it's actually an international movement comprised of community activists, individual leaders, elected officials, organizational leaders, people who work for and with organizations. And it's this very exciting, ever-increasing and ever-growing movement that is all-inclusive, no matter if people are Republican or Democrat, uh, right-wing or left-wing, any form of Jewish, religious, or non-religious, including other people of other faiths as well. So when we're we're focusing on the rights of Jewish people, we're also bringing in our allies because Jewish people have been at the forefront of so many civil rights and social justice movements. And right now, with this rise of Jew hatred that we're seeing every day on the streets, uh, vandalism, threats, bomb threats are happening at, at Jewish institutions regularly, but also physical violence where Jews are getting attacked because they present as Jews. So primarily we see Orthodox Jews being attacked because they're obviously Jewish. If they wear a kippah or if, or if they look a specific way or if the women look a specific way or people who wear things like this and again, David around their neck. Now, this also includes people who are obviously supportive of Israel because we're in an era <laughs> where people mask their dare I say, anti-Semitism, their anti-Jewish beliefs, by calling it anti-Israel or anti-Zionism. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to be here speaking with you today. Thank you so much. You know, what you said about the difference or like the, the choice of the name of, of end Jew hatred as opposed to, you know, end anti-Semitism, I think, I think it gets lost on people that anti-Semitism is about prejudice against Jewish people or discrimination against Jewish people. Uh, because I don't know why, but just it gets lost in their their understanding. I've, I've, I've talked to students, many students who aren't Jewish, and uh, that sometimes gets lost. So, uh, you know, I really love how, how, you know, you described that. I think it's important how you described that as, you know, this organization and this movement is about uh, preserving the rights, the civil rights movement of of the Jewish people, and and you know combating that discrimination and that hatred and that that prejudice against the Jewish people. What um, I know that your your career, you're an <coughs> Emmy award winning actor. You've been a television host, filmmaker. You know, and you also work in um, in Israel advocacy, and you you counter anti semitism. You provide education about anti semitism. How did you become a leader in this this cause when you have this background in the entertainment in industry? Well, I work as an actor, director, filmmaker, television host, and news commentator. What is the through line throughout all of that? Is that I'm a storyteller. I know how to tell a story. I know how to relay a message. I'm 
media trained, right? All of that experience means that I know how to focus on the narrative that I'm telling. Now, because I care about society, I care about the world, I was raised that way. That's part of my Jewish identity. And it's also part of my Israeli American identity and my being a first generation American, where advocacy is so important where we realize in these democratic countries, the two democratic countries that I'm a citizen of, Israel and the United States, that it's we the people, it's up to us to to practice democracy and to build and enhance and progress democracy the way we as individuals and we as community members need it. We cannot rely on our leaders to tell that story. That goes back to storytelling. I know how to tell a story and I know how to do it well. And I keep improving my craft and I keep becoming better at it because I'm practicing it regularly. So I'm able to bring in my, my skills and experience as an actor, as a director, as a filmmaker into my work as a news commentator and a television host. And also when it comes to advocacy and representation and activism. So when I get invited to be a speaker at an event or to lobby and meet with elected officials, I think about people the same way an actor and director does. Who is my audience? Mm. What is the message I'm relaying to them? How do I bring them into the story? How do I take them on my journey, but make it their journey? Because when we create art, we're creating it for somebody. And now the art is of and for that somebody. They now have ownership of it. So that's a, a creative approach to advocacy that I have been utilizing for, gosh, a very long time now. Wow. Uh, what, what would you say is the story of, of the Jewish people and the story of Israel? Like what, what would you hope someone who's new to uh, this? This subject, I know it's a big question, but mm -hmm. someone who's new to this, this subject, what story would you want to tell that person? One of the stories that I like to tell, the story of the Jewish people, it's a story of resilience. We have so many jokes about it. We even have that joke that you've probably heard that every Jewish holiday can be described in nine words. They tried to kill us. We survived. Let's eat. <laughs> That's like what what the jewish people are about we are a victimized and marginalized people but we're still here and if you look at history it almost doesn't make sense that we're still here because of the huge superpowers that tried to eradicate us that tried to oppress and enslave us and and subjugate us but we're still here and i think that going back to the focus on civil rights and social justice and what peoplehood means and what nationalism means to focus on what is the narrative of the people. And as opposed to, from my perspective, primarily focusing on victimhood, mm -hmm. I like to focus on resilience because that is progressive, because that is progress, because that is forward moving and believing in a future. I cannot only focus on the past. I must utilize the past, know that the past shapes my present, but it's what I do with it in the present that's going to shape my future. And that's what I'm inspired by as a Jew and as an Israeli and as an American. So I have these identities that very much affect so much of what I do. And when I'm challenged by life, because we all are challenged by life, stress happens. The stressors are there. They're there for most of us who are active. The stressors are there every single day, but it's how we keep moving forward. So for example, I'm an avid skier and I love to ski. The winter is my favorite season. Most people talk about the summer. They love the summer. Mm -mm. No, give me the winter. If it could be winter all year, I would love it because I go up into the mountains. I'm able to get away from people and not have all these devices that work at such high elevation. And I, I do the double black diamond runs, the black diamond runs, the most challenging parts of the mountain, which are filled with obstacles. Now, I don't just ski down the mountain at high speeds. I'm a little bit of a speed demon. I don't just ski thinking about the obstacles. 
I think about my path around the obstacles. If you're moving forward in life, you cannot only focus on the obstacles. Otherwise, you're going to hit those obstacles. You have to focus on your path around them or through them. And it's the same philosophy that I would approach uh, when I would surf in the ocean. Okay. Sometimes I do stuff in the summer too. In the ocean, you get these giant waves. So what do you do? When a wave, when a challenge is coming at you, you can dive underneath it and emerge victorious on the other side. Uh, you can try to catch the wave and ride the wave, ride the crest of that wave victoriously. You can also stand there and try to fight the wave and be crashed by the wave and flip and tumble, right? What are your choices? You have a choice when an obstacle comes your way. So those are my sports references. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give you team sports references because I'm not really into team sports. I'm a total team player in life and throughout everything that I do, but I very much love individual sports. It's why I love uh, watching the Olympics and to see what an individual can can do, what an individual can create. And dare I bring that back into advocacy? When individuals do great things and pursue their own greatness and applaud and support other individuals who do those great things together, we uplift each other. And that is the unity that is so necessary to be part of community. It's as a community, we need to applaud each other and support each other. So yes, I work as the director of mobilization for the end Jew hatred movement. It sounds negative to the ear, purposefully so. Mm -hmm. But as part of that, we're also supporting and including other people, other activists saying, we need to work together. There's the Jewish principle, and I'm talking for a long time, but I love this one principle, and then I'm going to stop talking um, for the rest of this interview. Uh, there's a Jewish principle where uh, my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor and, and, a, a, and a true hero, recognized hero, he used to like to reference this bit of halakha, of Jewish, um, oh my gosh, how do you say halakha in English? Uh, 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 Jewish, Jewish thought, where... Okay. One stick, he would say, you can easily break. But if you bring a bundle of sticks together, you cannot break them. Mm. And that's what we need to be as this unified community. We need to be the bundle of sticks. So when the haters come for us, they cannot break us because we are strong, because we can lean into each other. Mm. Can you tell us about the end Jew hatred thing? <clears throat> that you all are planning and how people can be involved yeah. in that? End Jew Hatred Day is uh, is going to be on April 29th. We have elected officials around the world, politicians around the world, organizations and organizational leaders who are all declaring and proclaiming April 29th as End Jew Hatred Day. It's this international day recognizing the End Jew Hatred movement, but truly it's recognizing the cause to have a day where no matter who you are or where you are or what your work is or what your life is like, you join in to declare April 29th as End Jew Hatred Day. We need to have these days for the different causes. And we have them for so many different causes. And we're glad to have this, this April 29th as End Jew Hatred Day. So our call to action is to have people post on social media post on social media about End Jew Hatred Day and why you support this cause, why you're fighting against Jew hatred. So if we can have all of these different people on social media posting about it, we can increase awareness. Because one of the problems is, I was even at a dinner party recently and <clears throat> somebody was saying to me, wow, I see that you, I know all of your career and your acting and filmmaking, but you care about Jewish causes. You talk about Jewish causes so much. Why do Jews need advocacy? Everybody knows that Jews are, are the wealthiest people in the world. Everybody knows that Jews are strong. Jews don't need advocacy. And I was like, 
what? And this was coming from a very well-educated Renaissance person, somebody who knows so much about the world. That's why we need to do this. We need to take part of this day to increase awareness. Now, mm -hmm. this is also an opportunity to give to elected officials who care about connecting to the Jewish community, or maybe they're part of the Jewish community, to show that they are supporters. Just like within the LGBTQ movement, we have the plus, LGBTQ plus. We need the plus to be part of the Jewish community, Jew plus. People who are of or support the Jewish community need to take action. And if you're not Jewish, if somebody's not Jewish, it's still to show that if you truly are a social justice warrior, you're going to do something for the Jewish people. Because we have seen a significant increase in hate crimes against Jewish people. We have an all-time high in uh, recorded history since 1979 of uh, Jews in America being attacked through physical threats, through physical violence, through vandalism, through graffiti, through online posts, uh, Jew hatred that has reared its ugly head in media and in entertainment. We're seeing these all-time highs, but it's what we do about it, what we do when this challenge faces us and how we can rise victorious. I'm not going to go back into the surfing and the skiing references, but you get the point. So End Jew Hatred Day is bringing that all together in an encapsulated day day where people can post, where people can speak out. And you know what? Post before the day. Post anytime you want. And Destiny, I look forward to seeing your posts. And when you do post, I will make sure that the End Jew Hatred Movement and so many of these other followers uh, and activists and collaborators and community members within this movement are, <laughs> excuse me, reposting and resharing, saying thank you for, for making me feel so seen. Thank you for caring about the movement we're going to amplify you. That's what the Black Lives Matter movement has done. That's what the LGBTQ movement has done. That's what the Me Too movement has done and the women's movements and the Stop Asian Hate movement. End Jew hatred as a movement needs to do the same things that all of these other civil rights and social justice movements do and have done successfully. I I totally agree with, with what you said that the like movement for, you know, Jewish advocacy needs the plus, you know, I was telling someone uh, the other day that the Jewish community is only 2%, like roughly 2% of the, the United States population. Yet, you know, you have people saying these things, like, like your friend at, at dinner, oh, aren't the Jewish people so powerful? And <laughs> aren't they so rich and, and so strong and they, you know, control things and why do they need our, our help? And, and maybe your, your friend didn't mean, um, you know, some of the things that, that I said, but these are stereotypes and, you know, things that, that I hear and, and that the students I work with hear on a regular basis. But as you're saying, you know, yes, like the Jewish community is, is, has in you know, in recent years been disproportionately uh, targeted for hate crimes and and uh, harassment and discrimination, and so we need that that plus those people beyond the Jewish community to also recognize this problem and lend our voices to it. And you know the multiple sticks. I love the picture of the multiple sticks that you <laughs> painted. It's easy to snap one twig, but it is not easy to snap you know multiple branches that are coming together to to stand for something and right. to oppose being being broken and so this day this end jew hatred day where everyone is uniting and and raising their voices to discuss this and bring bring light to this this problem i think it's a great idea and uh, i i just would really encourage anyone who isn't jewish who's listening to also uh post on this day and and share uh, amplify Jewish voices on this day and uh, discuss this because we each have different audiences. We each have different platforms. I, uh, you've all, you, <laughs> we've just met, so you don't know this, um, but I have a pretty significant uh, Christian TikTok following. I, 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 I looked, I did oh, do my research on you. Oh, nice. Um, you know, and I am able to speak to people that will never come across your page. 
Hmm. You know, um, I may, you're able to speak to people who will never come across, um, you know, my page and everyone listening has audiences and a platform to reach people that you and I will, will never reach. And so it is so important that each of us lend our voices to these topics that are important to us because the people who follow us and are in our, within our realm of influence, they won't know unless we tell them. That's true. Know. Well, but yeah. that's how we are part of the same community. You're talking about having a, a Christian following uh, as a as a Christian person. I have a, a Jewish following and an LGBTQ following, and uh, I actually I have a more and more multi multi faith um, uh, followings. But that's how we're part of the same community, and that's something that's so important for people to recognize. You cannot only look within and stay within your community when you need something. That's the joys of looking at what an intersectional identity is and that we all have intersectional identities. If you think about things as a Venn diagram, where do we connect? And when you understand where we connect as individuals and as individual communities, you can now understand how we have impact on each other. That's why we say things like women's rights are human rights and human rights are women's rights. Black rights are human rights and human rights are black rights. LGBTQ rights are human rights and human rights are black rights. Jewish rights are human rights and human rights are Jewish rights. Because when you focus on one community, you're going to be able to have an impact on any community that directly or indirectly relates to that community. So we need to rise up and we need to wake people up and say, I'm calling out to you because I need your help right now. My arms, my hands are extended. Mm -hmm. This is what I need you to do for me. And as we're doing things for each other, we're supporting each other. It, it, it is the necessary unification that we need. So while there are days for so many things, there's Mother's Day and Father's Day and Ice Cream Day and Dog Lover's Day and Cat Lover's Day and, and, and Black Lives Matter Day and Stop Asian Hate Day. Yeah, we have an end Jew hatred day. And we're talking about social media <clears throat> as a primary focus for this day because it's so important. 90% of people under the age of 40 receive their news and information from social media. That's a huge statistic. 90% yes. of people under the age of 40 receive their news from social media. That's why the, the hate that we're seeing on social media needs to be counterbalanced by positivity. Why when people are attacking other people on social media, we need to counterbalance or, or overtake it with the positivity and with the support. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, Destiny, I would love to collaborate with you on every platform on social media. And by the way, I'm also, um, I've been speaking with Christians United for Israel, uh, oh, awesome. which, which are a really cool organization. And it's saying Jewish causes cannot only be for the Jewish community. We need everybody else to rise up for us the same way we rose up and continue to rise up for them. And to say, we, we need to work together on this. That's so we, we look at the statistics, there are, uh, there are about 15 million Jews in the world today. 6.9 million live in Israel. Anywhere from 5.3 to 6.7 million live in the United States. Now, there are the reason that's such a, 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 a vast difference is because there are different studies that talk about who is a Jew and how do people consider themselves Jewish. Nonetheless, there are, there are less than 1 million Jews who live outside of Israel and the United States. So this Jew hatred that we're seeing in the United States is because the U.S. has the second largest Jewish community in the world. Now, how do we connect here, especially with ICC and a focus on Israel, People are using Israel as an Israeli politics as an excuse to attack Jews, to, to put down Jews, to threaten Jews, or whether it's from a place of uh, down punching or up punching. I was on the air the other day on a news program, and this woman said to me, same thing. Well, everybody knows that the Jews are, are, are smarter and successful, and that's why 
we need to understand why anti-Semitism is happening. And she was saying it as if she was complimenting Jews. And I'd have to say, well, that's called up punching and to actually have that conversation. Jews in the United States are oftentimes held to a double standard where all of a sudden every Jew is supposed to be able to defend Israel and to speak about Israel as an Israeli historian or Jewish history as a Jewish historian. Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about pro-Israel and anti-Israel? What other countries do we hear? Do we hear pro-Nigeria or anti-Nigeria? If we look at what Boko Haram is doing to, to women and young girls in northern Nigeria, where last year there were about uh, three and a half thousand girls who were abducted by Boko Haram and forced into marriages or prostitution. Are people taught, and Nigerian government has not fought back aggressively against it. So why aren't people saying pro-Nigeria or anti-Nigeria? Or women and LGBTQ people in Gaza, controlled by Hamas, have a very, very difficult life. Women are not able to talk about uh, uh, domestic abuse and domestic rape. There's no support system for them. Why aren't people talking about pro and anti when it comes to that situation. Or we can talk about so many other countries that have, let's talk about America. We've had a very challenging political situation over the last few years. If I'm against a po- certain political leader, does that make me pro-American or anti-American? No, I can be against that leader. And the same thing is with Israel. If you don't support specific policies of Israel, doesn't make sense for you to be completely against a people or completely against a country. And that's one of the arguments that I talk about, especially when dealing with college students, is you know how to advocate. And they'll say, why? I said, you know how to advocate for yourself. If you can defend yourself and your perspective, you're now able to advocate for your community. Hmm. And now if you know how to advocate for your community because you understand your community, You can take a step further out. You know how to advocate for your state, your city, your your fellow students, or maybe let's take a step further out. You know how to advocate for your nation, your people, the people who are like you. And that's what you can do. And just focus on the facts you know. You do not have to be a historian and know everything about everything, but you know how to defend yourself. And if you can do so calmly without responding to emo- uh, in an emotional or weak way, then you can win. Mm. My last question for you. you. We started this conversation by talking about the story of the Jewish people being a story of overcoming. What, what gives you hope for the future of the Jewish people? It's a big question, but uh, uh, youth yeah. s- students, this world is a world that our world is about youth. Our world is about is about life. We see it in nature. Things that grow and things that die nourish future growth and future life. We have the seasons, the leaves fall from the trees. And yes, many people rake the leaves and move them away, but those leaves have a very important task because fall leads into winter. Those leaves are supposed to cover the ground floor and keep everything that's growing in the earth a little bit blanketed, a little bit warmer. And then those leaves decompose and they help new growth. Same thing we see throughout nature. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with humanity. It's the older generations who have lived their lives and have shaped the path And everything that they have done and everything that they are is going to help nourish the younger generations. So that's why students are so important. And we're in a time where we're seeing students rise up. We're seeing students speak out. We're seeing students take charge. And it is nothing short of effing amazing. It's so exciting. We need more people to take action. We need more people to to take charge and use that youthful vibrance to create the world that we want to see. Change the world to be the world you want it to be. You cannot only accept the world as it was given to you. Mm. 
No, no, nobody has that. Well, I don't know. Maybe there are super privileged people out there, and I don't know. But even for them, the world you're given is not the world you're merely merely supposed to accept. Hmm. It's it's putty for you to do something with it. And that is where resilience comes from. And that's where progress comes from. And that's where the future comes from. Yuval, David, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh my gosh, Destiny, you are amazing and incredible in your own right. I just love everything that you do and how you share your voice. And you're also a storyteller. That's what you're doing. You're using your skills and your talents to, to relay messages. And I think that's something that everybody can do. We are creative beings and we need to explore what is our creativity? How do we create? We have an inherent need to create, whether it's an art project or, or I don't know, fix building a chair, fixing something, painting something, creating children, creating a book, what, oh, who knows what it is. We have a need to create. And then when we can apply that creative need that is part of the human existence and apply it to the causes that we care about, mm -hmm. that's where I think we can win. That's mm -hmm. where I think we can be resilient and change people's minds by embracing a creative approach. And, and you do that throughout your work. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. And, and I just really love this conversation that we've had today about where creativity can impact our advocacy and how there is so much more to the story of Israel and the story of the Jewish people right. challenges. It is also a story of overcoming and resilience. And uh, I just encourage everyone again to participate in End Jew Hatred Day on April 29th. And uh, I'll be participating and yeah. we're just so happy to support you in, in, this, in this work. Thank you so much. Thank you. And of course, uh, if anybody can or wants to, you can follow the End Jew Hatred movement across social media at End Jew Hatred. And of course, connect with me as well. There aren't that many Yuval Davids. Um, I do have those nice little blue check marks, so you always can know that it's me. But uh, it's important to follow the people and the movements and the organizations that we care about and amplify them. That's a way that we can respond to hate speech. The response to hate speech is more speech. We need to speak out in order to drown out the haters, but also to amplify the positive, supportive people. Mm. So one thing that we don't see on social media enough are people just writing kind messages like, you go girl, or I love what you did, or wow, this is amazing. We're seeing so many trolls, people who feel that they can just share negativity on social media. We need to more than counterbalance that with positivity. So that's my final call to action. Join the End Jew Hatred Movement, follow and support everything that ICC does, post about End Jew Hatred Day, and when you see or encounter or know people who share goodness on social media, like, follow, share, support, and comment. Amplify the positivity. And that is the resilience that will overcome the negativity. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow us on social media at IsraelCC and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.